he's the shove it man. Oh, he's the shove it man. He's gonna shove it. He's gonna shove it man. All right, welcome back to the Shove It Show. Today it's time to spray as we watch some more NWA TNA, the series which is somehow running despite taking years of my life. And talking of years, today it'll be the final episode from 2003 and the first episode of 2004, as TNA somehow limps across the line to a new year. The show starts with Eric Watts lecturing the good guys and giving them matches that they want. But unfortunately the world title will not be on the line as the champion has filed an injunction and will only have to defend it every 30 days. Goldie Watts doubts that her man is even running the company anymore. The first person to make his way out is a wild slap nuts appearing. Jeff Jarrett. Jarrett cuts a promo bragging that he's outsmarted Eric Watts and doesn't have to defend his title belt against Sting. Eric Watts makes his way out holding a ridiculously long microphone wrapped in toilet paper for some reason. Watts calls Jarrett Triple J, Jeff the Jackass Jarrett. Watts is upset that Jarrett isn't defending his belt against Sting tonight, but Jarrett will have to defend the belt on the first episode of 2004. Jeff says Watts isn't even running the company anymore and that Goldilocks is just a gold digger who doesn't realise Watts has no power. The man called Sting comes to the ring, he's going to face Jarrett in a non-title match. The match doesn't start straight away as Sting is in the crowd as they all squirt in their nappies of happiness to stand by their hero. They fight in the crowd of weapons and I think this is a record time for crowd brawling in a Jarrett match. They fight on a balcony, which is of course a bit stupid teasing a big dive from either of these guys as we know it won't happen. They aren't exactly New Jack. They make their way around the arena and back to the ramp where Sting hits a suplex. Sting is dominating so Jarrett does what he does best and headbutts Sting in the nutsack. Moments later we get a meeting of the minds as Sting meets Jarrett's nutsack. Now it's time for your NWA TNA Smack of the Week, sponsored by Wrestling GM. If you love wrestling and you love fantasy booking then this is the mobile game for you. In Wrestling GM your say is final, just like the Hulkster brother. Pick how each show plays out. Who faces who in fantasy dream matches? Who is champion and plan a wrestler's career over time? I've been a fan of this game for a while and I of course had to create the Rinker King roster with a few additions. Because the world deserves a world champion like Sonny, don't look at my ass Siaki, or maybe Scott Steiner. I just can't decide who deserves to be on top of the Ring of the King wrestling mountain. One thing's for sure though, the boy ain't getting any wins, he's getting squashed every week like a geek. A bit of imagination can take you a long way in this game. But if you have no imagination, then don't worry, because this game also features real wrestlers for its community creations. The more you play, the more coins you receive to unlock more wrestlers, commentators and managers, and create your own wrestlers. Compete against the computer to see who can win the ultimate ratings war. It's available for iOS and Android, check the link in the description to get started. Oh man, it's the ultimate battle of good versus evil with Steve Fordham and Stinger versus Jeffrey Jarrett. Oh, they just smash their noggins together and Sting falls forward like a tree in the woods. Timber! Straight into the gold nutsack of Jeff Jarrett. You know that hurts, I so don't need to say it twice like a parrot. That was your NWA TNA Smack of the Week, sponsored by Wrestling GM. After the double down, Sting hits a bulldog and the Stinger splash. He has the death lock on when, oh, here we go again. The red shirt security attack Sting. This distracts everybody as Kid Cash hands Jarrett a guitar. But no, AJ Styles also appears, cutting Jarrett across the ropes and taking the guitar away. Sting hits the death drop to win in just a few minutes. I guess Jarrett ain't so hard to beat when the title isn't on the line. Jarrett throws a screaming tantrum and yells in Mike Tanay's face, but Tanay isn't having it. Jarrett is much easier to stomach when he loses. Raven is in the darkness with his two ex-girlfriends Punk and De Niro. They just won't leave him alone. The three of them are going to play a part in a cage match tonight. Raven vows to leave the ring full of carcasses of his enemies. When he wins, it'll bring him closer to achieving his destiny of facing Jarrett for the world title. Quote the Raisin, nevermore. Daniels and Saban will have a match now which presumably determines the top contender for the X Division title. Daniels is still injured from a battle on the last episode. It's a fun start with lots of reversals and bodies flip flopping everywhere. After a very long period of evenness, Saban lands a springboard missile dropkick which clears the fallen angel from the ring, and Saban dives back out at him. Back in the ring, Daniel shuts him down for Turtle World Batbreaker. There's a weird moment here where Daniel does like a spear to Saban's ass. The crowd are strangely quiet for this one. Daniels connects for spinning powerbomb for a two and starts to think about hitting a big dive, but he thinks for too long and Saban throws him. It's game on for Saban as he connects with a brain buster. Daniels closes him down with Uranagi and the best moonsault ever for a two count. The Angel's wings is reversed now as they trade pin attempts for a bit. 
Saban slips out of a powerbomb attempt and boots the bad head of Daniels. Saban is about to spring into the ring when Elix Skipper decks Saban from behind. Christopher Daniels wins with the Angels' wings and he smiles at his former partner Skipper, who hasn't been on telly for a number of months. In the back, Slapnuts is raising hell as he's been known to do and he's screaming at all the hill wrestlers. Everybody is yelling, all of these people are unbearable. I think Jarrett is unhappy that nobody is backing him up. Don't worry Jeff, I'm sure they will be whenever you put your belt on the line. Out next, it's the master of the cab driver slam and the gifted Glenn Gilberti. How is he gifted? They are the gifted cab drivers. They're facing America's Most Wanted, so this match feels a little bit uneven, but stranger things have happened. This is a no DQ match, hence why all the wrestlers look scruffy. The gifted drivers hit some weak double team offense on Storm. Storm is smashed into a trash can as Harris returns to the match with a big driving crossbody. He's a house on fire, but turns around into a cab driver slam, a cab driver slam, it's over. Actually, it's not, because no pin is made by the moron. He soon regrets that as Storm super kicks a trash can into his face. Storm hits a jumping trash can shot to the cabbie now. AMW seem to have it won, but instead decide to introduce a ladder to the match. Young takes a ladder shot on the outside, which Tanae calls the ultimate swerve. Storm also catapults him into a waiting ladder. Gilberti and Harris brawl into the crowd. It's confusing me as Harris has Storm's merch on. We cut back to the ring to see Storm smashing a ladder into the cabbie's coin purse. Brawling continues for ages, the match is stalling a bit. Young sort of drop toe holds Storm into a ladder. He's now set up on a ladder where Young hits him with a lion soul. You forget how athletic this guy could be. On the outside of the ring, Harris is trying to power on Gilberti for a table, but it's the cabbie to the rescue. Their double teaming comes to nothing as Harris overpowers them. Unfortunately for him, he misses his spear and crashes into the ladder. The gifted cabbies give him another ladder shot for good measure, but it's just a two. Storm has woken up now and the cowboy hits a snap slam on the outside and he lays Young on the table. Harris holds him still as Storm is about to fly, but it's Gilberti to the rescue this time. He spends too long Gorman out though and Harris spears him into a ladder. Quickly, Storm flies off the top and Swanton bombs the cabbie through the table for the free. Dude, I was watching the NWA TNA show the other day, man. And this cowboy, James Storm, he stole my Swanton bomb finishing maneuver, man. And it finished. Man, I'm going back to Carolina. And I'm going to tell my stone of French Shannon all about you cowboy man a great match but it soon stunk up because the red shirt security are here again attacking amw harris is handcuffed in the corner but they can't deck him with the chair yet as storm starts kicking ass then Jarrett rushes the ring and he repeatedly hits storm with the chair northcut and legend hit a spike pile driver on the chair to storm jesus what a hard hitting segment this was slapnuts decks the handcuffed harris with his guitar i guess that's what happens when you cross slapnuts in the back, D'Lo and AJ are told that the one who makes the pin in the main event tonight will be getting a world title shot. AJ and D'Lo both want a shot, but they aren't bothered which one of them wins it. It's described as a dream match multiple times. But then, the New York numpties make their way out. Which moron decided that anything involving these two would be a dream match? They face D'Lo Brown and AJ Styles. Styles has some nice moves here, most notably with Johnny Swinger before rolling away from an attack and tagging D'Lo. It's all D'Lo until Swinger boots him in the nutsack. They keep cheating behind the ref's back, it's nothing you haven't seen before. They're morons though and they allow Stars to make a blind tag who flies in with a double drop kick, one leg each. Stars and D'Lo consider dives. D'Lo can't hit one, but he ducks just in time for Stars to hit the flop out of the ring. Man, these two are always such a fun team. Back in the ring, Stars hits a drop kick for a two. The Diamond Man just can't get going against Stars. D'Lo assists Stars with a splash for a two. It all goes wrong though when Stars attempts a springboard crossbody but instead has his gut broken in half. AJ is isolated by the New York numpties, but not for long as Stars hits a nice Pele kick. For the first time now, Stars and D'Lo's double teaming does not work. They sort of shrug it off, and seconds later they hit dual slams. There's a really weird moment now. Stars and D'Lo look to hit stereo dives. D'Lo lands his frog splash, but I'm not sure if D'Lo shook the rope too much, but AJ tries to dive out the ring at slap nuts, but completely misses him. It looked terrible. The New York numpties beat D'Lo with a problem solver. They will now receive a tag team title shot, which seems like a strange choice. Good match, until the dodgy finish. I'm not sure what it was supposed to be. Was Jarrett late in knocking Stars off the dive? Who knows? In the back, the warrior low-key is looking like he wants to eat Scott Hudson. He says he's going to win the X Division title tonight. Elix Skipper walks up asking to reform Triple X, but Loki doesn't trust Daniels. Skipper tells them that they're all family. Big drama in the X Division. Here we go then, Loki versus Shawn Michaels, cousin. 
Michael Shane for the X Division title. It's Loki with the first big move when he hits a 619 to Shane's gut. Loki keeps booting him in the ass and trying to remove his tights for some reason. Shane bails to the ring where he catches another 619 type kick. Tracy Brooks causes a distraction which allows Shane to smash Loki off the ring apron. Every time Loki makes a comeback, Tracy causes a distraction. Eventually, Loki does make his comeback with strike after strike and a big springboard kick for a two. Shane calms him down with a TKO into his knee. He punctuates that for diving elbow drop, however, Loki somehow kicks out. Loki makes his comeback with a deadlift bridging suplex for a two. Shane then fights out of the dragon sleeper and dodges a kick. Loki catches him with a back kick, and then the pin is made, and Loki visibly puts Michael Shane's hand on the rope. What a terrible camera angle that was. Once again, this match is ruined by a bad finish. Loki hits a crazy dive, drifting through the air like a leaf in the wind, but lands on Shane's knees, who just rolls him up. The audience are in complete silence and definitely hate the finish. Loki takes his anger out on Tracy Brooks, but Shane stops the key crusher. Shane Douglas hits Loki in the face of a ring. They are the new franchise, and Loki, your ass has just been franchised. Elix Skipper saves Loki because we are family. All of the X Division fight each other until the geeks break it up. Eric Watts now makes an announcement that there'll be a four-way Ultimate X match for the title. The crowd don't react to this announcement. Ultimate X was not really an established match at this point, so maybe they just didn't even know what he was talking about. In the back, Scott Hudson is talking like a gangster, trying to impress the free live crew. I can't help but wonder how many takes this took. I think I'm gonna dree us out from the treetops on January 6th, and let me tell you, I'm down with that because it's off the hizzle. The Mold Dog announces that the free live crew are gonna be releasing their new single next week. Truth invites Hudson out back for a blunt. I'm surprised they let him off so easily for his fake gangstery. Another advert for the Girls of TNA calendar. This must be a collector's item and it features Trinity. So if this is an item which you have, send it to the Hawk now. Mike Tanay announces that Saddam Hussein has been captured, which gets the loudest crowd pop of the entire night. We're also told that the next TNA episodes are just going to be special recap shows, so we can skip those. In the back, the Red Shirts and Abyss are hyped up for their main event match. Slapnuts tells them they better win tonight because Eric Watts is getting too much power. Here we go then, Idiot Security will take on Raven and the Gathering in a cage match. I think this is only the second or third cage match in TNA history, and this cage looks huge. The cage is filled with weapons, so it looks like an early attempt at a lethal lockdown. There's about a million super kicks in this match. The Red Shirts come back and Northcutt does a nice release pump handle suplex. Abyss gives Punk a shock treatment backbreaker. Northcutt also powers Julio into the cage and into a powerbomb. I actually like Kevin Northcutt in the ring, I just hate the red shirt security gimmick. Double tables are set up with Julio in big trouble. Punk stops Legend from diving by throwing him off the cage. A huge fight is taking place around the ring for this high stakes matchup, which doesn't officially have any stakes lying in the match. Slapnuts climbs the cage as Tanae screams, oh no, not him again. My thoughts exactly. He throws some handcuffs into the ring. It doesn't seem to matter though as Punk hits a diving elbow drop off the cage into Abyss through double tables. Sting and Styles fight Jarrett on the ramp. Somehow the match is still going despite all the chaos. The red shirts are back on top now thanks to the handcuffs. It backfires though as Raven handcuffs the red shirts to the ropes. Abyss is trapped in a 3 on 1 but he still managed to hit a black hole slam on Raven. Abyss then sort of choke slams Punk into the cage as Raven drills Abyss with a chair. The Gathering hit concertos to the red shirts and Raven is about to beat Abyss when, wow, the Gathering turn on Raven and give him a concerto. They roll Abyss on top of Raven and it's over. Wow, that is a swerve that genuinely shocked me. I didn't see that coming. I guess they got tired of being the miserable ex-girlfriends. Actually a really nice episode of TNA where most of the matches delivered. A nice change for this 2003 episode. But now it's time for the first episode of 2004 and we'll see if they can keep the good times rolling. 2004 starts out with Jarrett laying down the law and Kid Cash being his errand boy. Jarrett says Eric Watts has to step down from his position and there is also no number one contender for his title. He's positively beaming, he looks like the cat that got the cream. Jarrett is hinting that there's some big news coming from TNA, but he is warned by somebody on the phone not to reveal the news. Borash is in the ring now with the Ultimate X structure behind him. The three live crew are here to perform their new single. Well, it's the same as their last single with a slightly different beat, and it still sucks. Conad's timing doesn't seem to be very good. All day, every day. This goes on for a few minutes with Truth mainly taking the lead, which is probably for the best. I don't think the Get Rowdy remix sold many tapes, but at least it's something to make them stand out. Still no Ultimate X match as Slapnuts is out now of his ass kissing crew. Jarrett is wearing one of the ugliest suits of all time. He's in a good old mood as he brags about his year's achievements. 
Jarrett has forced every member of the TNA staff to sign a sheet to say if they're with him or against him. He declares himself Mr. 2003, and that'll be some sort of award segment later on today. Eric Watts is called out as Jarrett wants to remove him from his position of power. Don Kawas reveals there is an ongoing court battle for control of TNA. Kawas wants him to resign now in order to avoid an ugly court battle, but Eric Watts refuses to step down. He makes fun of the height of Kid Cash. He is looking very small in there. Watts says his New Year's resolution is to make sure Jarrett loses its £10 of gold. Jarrett responds saying there is no number one contender when a masked moron wearing women's tights over his head climbs into the ring. The moron beats Jarrett out of the ring and back into it. Who is this new masked superstar? Looks like AJ Styles has been on the gear again. Roddy Piper goes on a drunken old man rant like he does every other week. He spends most of the promo saying how Ric Flair is scared of him. For some reason, Diamond and Swinger are talking about how horrible their career is going. Didn't they just win a number one contender shot on the last show? The gifted Glen Gilberti tries to rally his troops. Diamond blames the cab driver for the downturn in their fortunes and calls him a hayseed. Here comes Legend and Northcutt. When will this gimmick come to an end? They are once again teaming up with the Abyss. They face America's Most Wanted and the phenomenal AJ Styles. This is a team that I can get behind. Storm makes a fiery start, super kicking Legend straight away. They send Styles into some acrobatics and a clothesline, and then AMW hit a double bulldog. Legend desperately tags Northcutt. We cut away to see Kid Cash fighting with Jeff Jarrett's grandma in the back. I guess she didn't want to join Team Jarrett. Harris flies out the ring onto the red shirts, but Abyss decks AJ from behind. AJ isn't intimidated and he sends the monster out of the ring. The ref has disappeared and Northcutt whips James Storm with his belt. They take the ref away again, which leads to more belt shots. Storm is pretty much screwed as he's suplexed overhead into the corner. It continues going badly for him because Abyss flapjacks him into the map. More belts from Legend. Man, this ref has ADD. Storm does get a hope spot of the hangman's noose and he manages to tag Harris. Harris and Northcutt exchange blows and Harris hits him with a full Nelson slam. Abyss can get it too with the first press. Now AJ makes a blind tag and hits a springboard dual dropkick. The ring is cleared so AJ can hit a flip sent on out of the ring. Abyss is left alone with the AMW crew who hit a double flapjack. They can't put him away as the red shirts wake up and save him. AJ has it one now of a DDT but no ref once again. AMW finally have enough and start using belts too. AJ is just stood in the ring like a gorm when Abyss sneaks up trying to suplex him but AJ lands on his feet. AJ tries to stars clash him when Slapnuts once again runs into the ring and decks stars with the belt. Abyss wins the black hole slam. Good match, bad Jarrett. Up next it's the 2003 babe of the year Trinity who I honestly can't remember the last time she was even on this show. She talks about a stunt woman career. It sounds like she's just been off TV because she's been working on the Daredevil film. She says she loves pain. She wants to become the number one woman's wrestler in the history of wrestling. It's probably best to leave TNA then, love, as there isn't even a women's division. Her promo is randomly interrupted by Sonny, don't look at his ass Siaki, another person missing from the show for so long. He takes credit for all her accomplishments, I'm not really sure why. Then it randomly cuts to a Trinity promo in the arena where the exact same thing happens. That was weird. Siaki says that he should have been babe of the year. God, the 2002 glory days of his career seem like a distant memory. Kid Cash interrupts them asking them to sign their loyalty over to Jeff Jarrett. Siaki says he's been advised not to sign it by a mystery person. Trinity also doesn't want anything to do with Cash again. The New York numpties get their tag title shot at the free live crew's belts. As usual, the crew will be represented by Mold Dog and Truth because Conad doesn't like wrestling very much. The numpties almost win with some double teaming whilst the camera cuts away to show Daniels and Skipper plotting something. Truth hits the axe kick, but he can't win because the ref is distracted and the cab driver is here. The cabbie accidentally takes out Diamond and Truth beats Diamond with the back sack and crack. Short match, not much of a title match. It boils over with the cabbie and the Diamond Man, but fortunately their little friends are there to break it up. We now get highlights from a AAA main event where TNA were kind enough to lend them David Young and Michael Shane. Also, the IWA has some pretty nice highlights. Back in TNA land, Kid Cash forces Tiny the Timekeeper to sign allegiance to Jeff Jarrett. Why would he even want him? And why is this guy always a character? The security team are not impressed and Cash shoves Chris Vaughn, who is also a character on this show for some reason. In a dark corner somewhere, Scott Hudson reminds Raven that he still isn't getting a shot at the world title because of Julio and Punk. It cuts back to show Kid Cash is still threatening Chris Vaughn. Kid Cash calls him little when he towers over Cash. Vaughn won't sign and he decks Cash with his clipboard. They decide to turn this into a match as Vaughn ducks Kid Cash. Cash fights back quickly with a backbreaker. 
Don Harris comes to his rescue and hits a big slam as the referee turns his back on the match. For once, the referee has a good reason to be distracted. He doesn't agree with Kid Cash and Jeff Jarrett. Chris Vaughan, who makes the girls yawn, is the winner. Hill, Julio and Punk are in the back. They say their only mistake was following Raven. They don't really explain why they turned on Raven. The gathering will now take on Raven and a mystery partner who turns out to be the Sandman. More like the Sad Man. The comic team explain that due to Raven losing the match on the last episode, he will never be allowed a world title shot again. I don't remember that being a stiff at the time. Punk slaps Raven straight away. Raven slaps the gathering back as the ECW crew spit beers in their faces and kick them in their nutsacks. Sandman seems quite invested in this storyline as he hits the guillotine leg drop on Julio. He misses his next leg drop but stays in control. Sandman smacks him down a bunch of times but he misses his swanton bomb which leaves Jeff Hardy dumping in his nappy of anger. Punk joins the match with a springboard dropkick. De Niro and Punk isolate the Sandman. They both hit dives on the Sandman but Punk gets overzealous and misses his next dive. Raven gets the tag to zero fan reaction. He sandwiches the gathering which causes a ref bump. Raven hits the clothesline bulldog and looks to finish off Punk, but suddenly a dark hooded figure climbs onto the ring apron and he knocks out Raven with chloroform. Punk wins with the Raven effect. Was this the same mystery figure as the one from the first segment? No idea, it looked like Bastion Booger in his first gimmick. We aren't left waiting long as he unmasks and it's Father James Mitchell. Well at least that makes sense, and it also definitely wasn't Mitchell in the first segment. In the back, Michael Shane cuts a horrible screeching promo about how he's the greatest X Division champion of all time. Shane Douglas says the NWA are just trying to screw him by making him defend the belt against three other men. It's actually a really good promo from Shane Douglas and he shows Michael Shane how it's done. Today, Watts and Goldilocks are here to present the Mr. 2003 award. It's between AJ Styles and Jeff Jarrett. AJ wins and gets a big trophy, which would be recycled by the cheap TNA for years and years to come. AJ promises that he'll deliver more in 2004 and will be a world champion again. Slapnuts of course takes exception to that. Jarrett thinks he deserves the award because he's the longest reigning TNA heavyweight champion. Mike Tanay defends the decision and says the fans don't like Jarrett and AJ Styles is Mr. TNA. Tanay goads Jeff Jarrett into putting up his belt in a match with the Mr. TNA trophy on the line too. Jarrett will only have that match if Watts and AJ Styles can beat Jarrett and Abyss next week. If AJ loses, Eric Watts is fired. Goldilocks accepts on Eric Watts' behalf with Watts looking doubtful. Not sure why she's allowed to make decisions on his behalf. All that's left is Ultimate X. Chris Saban, The Warrior, Chris Daniels and the champion Michael Shane. There's questions over whether Daniels and Loki have been aligned by Skipper. Saban nails a huge flip dive out of the ring. He's a house on fire as he leg drops Michael Shane onto a chair. Daniels tries to hit Angel's wings on Loki and Key tries a key crusher so I guess they aren't friends after all. Daniels attempts to springboard into the ring to catch the wires but he misses. I think that was a botch because he looks really annoyed. Daniels decides to try and climb the structure instead. He doesn't get anywhere near the belt before Shane wallops him with a chair. Shane is stupid too and tries to jump off a chair to reach the belt. It's not his first Ultimate X match so he's a dumbass for not knowing it wouldn't work. Shane gives Daniels a hurricane on a chair as it crumples. Loki takes a nasty fall out of the ring and his leg hits a table. Daniels is still trying to jump off a chair to reach the belt. His desperate attempt ends in him getting booted in half by Loki. The two former Triple X members both end up on the ropes where Loki applies a dragon sleeper. Saban kicks him off. Chris Saban drops Daniels on a chair. Then there's a ref bump. Everybody is down except Michael Shane. Scratch that, Loki wakes up and kicks a ladder at him. He tries a cartwheel kick but instead runs into a Shane super kick. Michael Shane tries to use the ladder to win which is apparently forbidden in this match but Daniels is awake now and he hits Urinagi off the ladder. The crazy moves continue with Loki hitting a German off the ladder. Daniels hits Loki with the BME. This match is mad. The ladder has been involved a lot in this match. It's not even supposed to be. Loki and Daniels fight on top of the ladder which is tipped over by Shane. I think they crash into the commentary desk but the camera kind of misses it. The ref has finally woken up and he doesn't allow Michael Shane to use the ladder. Chris Gorm takes the ladder away. Michael Shane starts climbing when Saban appears on the ropes and he kicks Shane through a waiting table. Saban makes it to the middle and after a very big struggle to get the belt down, he manages it. I swear it's like the opposite of the last match. Chris Saban is now the X Division Champion. Much better than the first Ultimate X match, even if you can look past the ladder usage. We go off the air with Jarrett gloating about tricking Eric Watts to somebody named Tom on the phone. I'm not sure anybody really cares about the bombshell of Eric Watts possibly losing his job, but it is what it is. Great couple of shows, the timing was much better, the match quality was much better, and it feels like TNA is strong heading into 2004. I'm the Hawk and you've been listening to me talk.